Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to leave our planet Earth and go look for more habitable planets that are closest to our planet. Welcome to What The Math. So in this video, we actually are not going too far in astronomical terms because we actually want to take a look at the closest exoplanets to our own solar system, or I guess to our own planet Earth, that we've discovered so far that might be habitable. There might be our new home. They might be places we want to visit. But obviously not anytime soon because we just don't really have any technology that lets us move that fast. Anyway, so, the closest one you probably have heard of before, and we're going to take a look at it right now. And actually, let's go back to Earth for a second, and depart from there. And we're going to a planet known as Proxima Centauri b, located right there, at a distance of about 4.21 light years away from our planet Earth. Most of the objects we'll be visiting today are going to be within about 20 light years distance, and this is the closest one. This one was discovered only in 2016, very recently actually. And when uh, the scientists discovered it, they got really, really excited because this beautiful object that you're about to see here was obviously not only a terrestrial planet, but also very likely a planet that might actually have liquid water on it. This planet is in the habitable zone of its star Proxima Centauri, but there is obviously a problem here. And the problem is that, first of all, this planet is probably tidally locked to its star. And second of all, it's very likely that because it's actually orbiting this beautiful red dwarf, it's possible that maybe just maybe there is no atmosphere. Maybe just maybe it's radiated by so many flares that it's been stripped of atmosphere completely and has nothing but ice left on the opposite side of the planet. So there are still some speculations about possible habitability of this planet, but don't be disappointed if we end up finding out that this is actually not a habitable planet. Nevertheless though, at being the closest planet to Earth, this is probably the one that we'll visit first when we get a chance to visit these planets, because we currently don't have a technology of any sort to, to be able to travel so fast. But you know what? It's still quite possible that within the next 100 years or so, we'll be able to at least send a few probes here to possibly discover if this planet actually has something as cool looking as this. Anyway, let's go to the next object. And the next object here is known as Tau Ceta E. This is an object I've actually covered uh, previously when I talked about Tau Ceta e star. And here we're actually going to just type the name of the star and head there right away. So Tau Ceta e is a yellow dwarf, very similar to our own sun. And in that sense, it gives us a little bit more promise on uh, allowing these exoplanets to actually have atmosphere and have more habitable conditions. Now here, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff orbiting around the star, but we're really only are looking for one object. We're looking for the object by the name of Tau Ceta E. Now, unfortunately, in Space Engine, these planets don't have the same designation because these are actually procedurally generated, so the actual planets have not really been added to this star just yet. But nevertheless, we can take a look at the closest resemblance of such a planet. And in this case, it would actually be this object right here, which is kind of similar in mass to the actual planet we've discovered. Now, let's go there and check it out, even though it's a little bit hot here. This is a metal world uh, that seems to be a little bit less hospitable to life at the temperature of 500 degrees Celsius. But uh, the planet we've discovered um, actually has something like 4.3 masses of Earth, mm -hmm. and it also has uh, temperatures of maybe about 68 degrees Celsius in real life. So we think that this planet might actually be a lot warmer than other um, habitable worlds we've discovered, and it's probably, if there is any water, probably has a lot of hot water on, on the surface. But nevertheless, let's actually land here and let's see what the surface actually looks like. 
And uh, the interesting thing about Taosit, I like I said before, is that it's actually a system that does have similar parameters to our sun, meaning that since this is not a red dwarf and since this is not a flare star, it might actually create a system that has relatively habitable conditions for us. In other words, most planets here might actually have atmosphere and possibly be habitable at least to some extent. So Tau Sitai is one of the more interesting closed system to us. All right, so this was Tau Sitai E. The next star we're going to talk about might actually not exist because we haven't really confirmed it just yet. But it's a uh, star and a planet called Captain uh, B. Basically, it's a planet around the star known as Captain Star. This is one of the few named stars out there. And this was discovered back in 2014. Now, this star is probably a little bit on the chilly side, even though it's about 4.8 masses of our Earth and has a radius of about 160% of our Earth. It's also very cold here. It's probably around minus 60 degrees Celsius. So maybe, unless it of course has thick atmosphere, maybe just maybe this is more of a cold habitable world. But nevertheless, the chances for things like ice and uh, some kind of a water underneath this ice are actually pretty high. So Captain's uh, Planet B is, if it exists of course, a pretty interesting planet to explore and might actually allow us to discover a world that's a lot older than ours because the system here is about 11 billion years old. Basically more than a double um, of our own solar system. And so this particular planet and this star is very very ancient and of course very interesting in terms of space exploration. So this is Captain's star. All right. The object number four is known as Wolf 1061C. In this case, it's called a cold desertic superaquaria. Basically a cold world, once again, where temperatures of minus 50 to minus 70 degrees Celsius. But the mass of this planet is higher than the mass of Earth at about 4.3 masses of Earth and about 1.5 radii of Earth. So the gravity here is a lot higher. And because of this, maybe just maybe there is actually also more atmosphere making this planet a little bit warmer, especially if there is higher atmospheric pressure. But as of now, we think it's probably relatively chilly. And once again, if there is any water, it's going to be in ice format, just like you see right here. And so other than being another cold-ish super Earth, we don't really know much about this particular planet. Okay. Object number five is a star and a planet known as Gliese 832. And here we're going to be taking a look at a planet with very high Earth habitability index, basically very Earth-like, known as Gliese 832c. Now the actual mass here, once again, is very high. It's about five masses of Earth. And uh, despite of this, it actually is in a habitable zone. And so the temperatures here are really, really nice. Now, in, in this game, it's minus 64 degrees Celsius, but we think that the temperature here could vary anywhere from minus 40 to possibly 7 degrees Celsius. And as a matter of fact, because this planet has um, a somewhat less circular orbit, the temperature here changes quite a lot depending on the region of its orbit. So you'll see that the temperature actually va uh, varies quite a lot here from between minus 30 to minus 60, but we think it might be actually warmer than that. And so Gliese A32C is probably one of the higher... Uh, and so this beautiful planet, Gliese A32C, has the highest habitability index of all of the planets we've discovered relatively close to us. And interestingly, it might actually be the world with the highest potential chance for us to discover extraterrestrial life as well. Now, these are all speculations, of course, but nevertheless, because its uh, Earth-like index is about 81%, basically this is 81% Earth-like, this makes this planet, or gives this planet, a very high chance of discovering life. And from what I remember in Space Engine, these colorful things here 
are usually life. So maybe just maybe this is actually life as well. Now, technically, I named this video Top 5 Planets, but I really wanted to mention another system that's slightly farther away. Now, it's not TRAPPIST-1, even though TRAPPIST-1 does have a lot of exoplanets that are terrestrial, it's a little bit closer, the distance of about 26 light years away from us. This is a system I've previously mentioned before, and it's a system known as Gliese 667. Now, if you scroll down the list here, you'll notice that this system has a lot of planets because this is actually a triple star system. We haven't really confirmed most of them yet, but we've confirmed at least one. We've confirmed this one right here, the planet known as CC. Basically, a third planet or a second planet orbiting the third star. This, we think, is a terrestrial world. We actually are very certain that it's in a habitable zone, that it has relatively comfortable temperature of about 4.3 degrees Celsius, and its mass is about 3.7 masses of Earth, with about uh, 1.5 radii of Earth. So this is a very, very Terra-like world. But then we also know that there are two possible other candidates in the same system, and these are... 667CE and 667CF. So these two might also be terrestrial, especially if we confirm their existence. In other words, this system might actually have at least three candidates for habitability. And their habitability index is relatively high as well. And as you can see in Space Engine, they all have atmosphere and they all have really, really cool looking uh, parameters, specifically topography. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and I wanted to kind of mention some of the closest uh, candidates to us, and possibly in a few years, this will change. It's very likely that we're going to discover more terrestrial planets, and we're probably going to discover some that are even closer. But hopefully we'll get to visit one in the next 20 or 30 years, especially if we actually get to launch some of the probes that we've been planning to launch for the past few years that will travel at about 20% of the speed of light. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.